Hey guys, Tekken here. Today I'm going to cover a topic that I've wanted to cover for a while now, and that is HR Puffins. This video will be covering the humble beginnings of the series, the controversies, the cameos, at least some of the ones I can find easy, and where the show and characters are nowadays. So sit strap in tight, let's get into puffin stuff. But first, let's have a little introduction, shall we? H.R. Puffin Stuff is a 1969 children's television show made by the duo Cinemarty Croft. The show aired in September 1969 and was a major hit, which featured the boy Jimmy, played by Jack Wilde with a magic golden flute named Freddy. He gets marooned on the living island and protected by Puffin Stuff, friendly yellow dragon. High jinks ensue as Jimmy tries to escape the island while the witch tries to capture him and his crew. The sh show only had 17 episodes but it remains a cult classic to this day, and is one of the top cult shows of all time. Now that you know what Puffin Stuff is about, let's get into our first topic, the show's creation. The beginnings of Puffin Stuff can be tracked all the way back to the Coca-Cola Expo in 1967 or 68, and Kaleidoscope, Cinemarty Cross puppet act at the time at the event, was so basically the groundwork for what became the TV show, HR Puppet Stuff. We don't have much saved a bit, but we do have some promotional images that will show right now. And this basically set the groundwork for Puppet Stuff, because a few years later, later, after the Crofts hit with the banana splits by helping with the costume, NBC is like, you guys should make your own show. And they ended up making Puffin Stuff, which take, took a lot of inspiration from Kaleidoscope, their own show that they did at the Coca-Cola Expo. So if the show was so popular, why did it only have 17 episodes in one season? Well, the main reason behind that is the budget. The budget was too high for the show due to how high-tech the costumes were at the time and how expensive it was to create everything. Because everything was made physically. And due to the budget, they couldn't make season 2, because the network only offered a 5% increase in the budget, which was not nearly enough to um, do season 2, so the cost ha cross had to dec decline the offer. Which, sure, sucks, but hey, the show is still good as is without a season 2. Sucks that we never got to see Jimmy go home, though. Now, here's the next part we're going to talk about. The controversies around the show. Let's start with the most well-known controversy, is people that assume that Puffin Stuff was influenced by drugs. I honestly do not believe this is the case. The Cross had denied it so many times, and the thing is, if it was truly based off drugs, how would it be approved by the network? Because sure, things were different back then, but there was no way they were going to accept a show that was based off drugs. And you can't, as Cro one of the Crofts said, you cannot do a show stone. So I honestly don't think they did drugs. They just had a bit very creative mind, and the name is ba the show's name and the character's name is based off Puff the Magic Dragon, and the voice of Puff and stuff actually helped create create the name of the show. So, if I can find the clip, I'll post it here. We thought of Puff the Magic Dragon, you know, the song sung by uh, Peter Paul and Mary, and then we thought maybe Puff and his different stuff. And call it puffin stuff and hr was supposed to be royal highness turned around and here comes another popular controversy that oh, a lot of people know the mcdonald's ripoff controversy there's so many other videos covering this topic specifically that i don't want to get into too depth in it but here's a basic something mcdonald's approached the cross wanting to make their own puffin stuff thing for mcdonald's the cross agreed did some work but they were ter but they were eventually told that the deal was no longer but they turned around and lied and revealed McDonald Land, which is quite literally a ripoff of Puffin Stuff's land. The Puffin Stuff TV show, literally, except everything was hamburgers, basically. Shortly after, they got the cross sued McDonald's, and seven years later, they won the case. McDonald's was found guilty. One year after Puffin Stuff, Puffin Stuff got ad adaptated into a film. Yeah, believe it or not. One year after Puffin Stuff hit the airwaves, the TV show got an adaptation into a film, and it's pretty okay. 
it's pretty faithful to the show. Some things are a bit different. Some of the costumes just look a bit cheaper, but besides that, it's basically pretty similar to the show, so this segment's not going to be too long. Although they get, they did get Mama Cass to play one of the witches, and that's pretty cool. Although the show did end and the movie released in theaters, does not mean Puffin Stuff was gone. Sure, he didn't get a set his own standalone series again, but he did make several cameos and just cover some of those now. A well-known cameo he made is on the show Chips, where he gets pulled over for speeding, but is let go. In a birthday episode for, on George Lopez, um, Puffin Stuff appeared for the birthday party. That's a pretty cool cameo too. He also appeared on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, a show that Sid and Marty Croft also created. And the last cameo I know about is when he appeared on Mutt and Stuff in 2016, I believe. And there's still more at the cover, and now it's time to cover the world of Sid and Marty Croft Amusement Park. I'm not going to go too in-depth with this one, because I don't know that much about it personally, and it's hard to find info about it, but... Basically, Puffin Stuff had a few appearances there, as a walk-around costume, I believe, and he had his own little dark ride, which is pretty cool. We do have a few images saved, but this is the only good quality one I can find. The world in City Mario Cross is not the only place you can find Puffin Stuff at an amusement park. Let's head to Six Flags. That's right, Puffin Stuff and his pals appeared at Six Flags for a short time. Maybe for a few years. Alongside other Sid and Marty Croft characters, Puff and Stuff, Kling, and Clang could be seen at the parks. And you could also take photos of them. The Cross even had their own puppet feeder at Six Flags, too. Which is really cool! Such a shame it's not there anymore. Puff and Stuff and his friends also had several um, live shows over the years. The most notable one being the Hollywood Bowl performance. Puff and Stuff even appeared at the Tournament of Roses Parade sometime in the 60s to 80s. We don't know where any footage is yet, if there is any footage of it at all, but we do have this one photo to prove that it one did exist. So where is Puffin Stuff and his wacky friends nowadays? Well, they're still being used by the Crofts. Recently, Puffin Stuff appeared at CroftCon, which is starting to tour. Puffin Stuff was also at the Hollywood Walk of Fame celebration for Cinema Marty Croft, alongside WikiPoo. And considering the fact that Puffin Stuff might be coming back as a series or movie, due to listening on Internet Movie Database, it's safe to say that Puffin Stuff isn't leaving our consciousness anytime soon. I've been ST Tekken, and thank you for watching. Thank you guys for listening to Ramble about this yellow fluffy dragon. I have a huge passion for Sam Marty Croft and Puffin Stuff, and I'm glad I'm finally able to talk about it on my YouTube. I'll definitely make more content about Puffin Stuff sometime soon. Bye!